Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about why you need to heal from trauma. My name is Fawn Peter. My aim here, my goal, my desire, my purpose is to help others to live better and happier. In the last video, I mentioned that I am on a healing journey. I am healing from my own trauma and it is eye-opening and enlightening and Today, I thought to share with you a few of the reasons why you need to heal from trauma, especially my people back at home, Nigeria. <laughs> we need this, honey. We need this because <laughs> when we talk about trauma, healing, mental health back at home, I mean, before, especially when I was younger, it was much more of a joke. As Nigerians, mental health trauma and healing is not something we talk about a lot, even though now we have started to talk about it more. In this video, I just want to highlight why we need to heal from trauma, why we need to heal as individuals. And I just hope Nigerians will actually pause <laughs> and listen to what I have to say. So I'm just going to go straight into it. I realized that living with trauma totally changed who I was like when I think about it when I know who I am deep down in my core that child I was that person inside of me and who I am out here it's not that I'm being fake it's more like who who my person my soul my identity has adapted you know into for the sake of survival when I look at that when I look at what is at the core, who I know myself to be, to have been, to, to should have been, if that's correct English. The, the parity is crazy. The, the, the gap, the, the difference, the opposition is like, whoa. Um, and for a while it has caused war within me. It has caused a little bit of, of confusion within me. It has caused just a lopsided sense of being. <laughs> I put that the, the weirdest way. Anyways, it has caused that within me. And now that I am in the process of healing, on the journey of healing, things are just getting clearer, more peaceful, softer, etc. So I'm just going to start with the first reason why I think people need to heal. And FYI, disclaimer, this is not when I say we need to heal or trauma, everybody has trauma of some sort. Well, let me not say everybody, you know, because I don't like complete extreme generalizations. Um, but I believe that most people have had some sort of trauma. It might be deeper than some others, or it might be something that seems a little bit more significant. But the significance and the depth of um, trauma and how it affects you is relative from person to person, right? One thing might not really hurt me so much, but might literally be the thing that breaks or, or wants to break another person. So it, it really doesn't matter what your trauma was or what caused you. Why do I say what your trauma was? That's the wrong way to put it. What caused your trauma or what event happened? I believe that most people, if not everyone, have experienced some sort of events that brought them trauma that they are living with and living through daily, day by day. So that's what we're talking about here. And so when I say we need to heal, this is not directed at some sect of the population or of the world or people who are broken or people who have trauma almost all of us fall in this category, right? So I'm just saying we all could heal from something and healing from your trauma, from your the effect or the, the, the residue of that traumatic event that happened to you is beneficial for these reasons. Number one, I wrote them down. Number one, to go back to your true self. That's the first reason why we need to heal from trauma. Trauma, like I said earlier, takes you so far away from your true self. The deeper it goes, the farther you go. The more painful it is, the farther you go. The heavier the trauma, the farther you go. And like I said, I know that as a child, I was this happy-go-lucky child. 
loving, emotional, soft, sweet, busybody, chatty everywhere. I was literally like a fly, if you could put it that way. Um, that is the identity I remember of myself as a child. I remember having guests, the visitors at home, and I would deep within me, I just want to bring albums and show you what has been going on with the family. <laughs> I want to show you the pictures. I want to show you the truths. I want to, I'm just like, I was always that child, you know, and I still am that individual. My sister knows. <laughs> the people who I'm comfortable with, who I'm happy with, I always feel like that, right? Um, But as I grew and encountered or experienced event that traumatized me and left its effect and interested you and, you know, the CPTSD, I think that's what it's called, um, I slowly started to adapt to an individual for the sake of survival to this person who would hold back my emotions. I wouldn't feel so much. I'd be like, mm, okay, you know, trying not to, because I would feel that welling up in me to, oh my God, baby, like, okay, you need to calm down, girl, you know, and you do all those things just for the sake of survival. And then it becomes who you are. It becomes the, the default setting. It becomes the first thing you reach to do, the first thing you try to do. Uh, without even thinking but yet something at the core knows that that's not you and that's that confusion I talked about so it's like there's there's been a lot of things in my head especially when I'm reading or or looking into um, personality types um, astrology Aries and stuff and I'm like this doesn't define me but at my core I know the world most some of these things that who I would have been like on a norm, on a norm. <laughs> but you know, I have like adapted to not being that way. And then, you know, reading about melancholy, phlegmatic, choleric, I would get so confused. Which one am I? I don't know where I am. And this all sounds very trivial. But experiencing it in the way I have has not been as trivial as it may sound because it's sometimes, especially with the personality types, the phleg phlegmatic, melancholic, I constantly wonder like, why do you not even know where you stand? Do you not know who you are? Like, how can you be every will? Like, you can't pick it, pick a side, right? And not that I have still figured it out because I haven't actually gone back to that conversation since I started my healing journey. But I'm just citing that as an example because obviously it has created that confusion. And this is what trauma does. And that's why you hear of some rape victims that have become loose cannons in the sense that they were traumatized and some of them traumatized over and over again and they began to believe that that was their worth and then they, be they began to sleep around and some might go the opposite direction right there's varieties there's various ways trauma can throw you literally just pick you from who you really are and your origins and your core and just throw you the opposite direction or whatever direction or many different directions, honestly. And so if you are living with the effect of trauma, if you're a person living day to day, some of us don't even know we're living with the effect of trauma. That's the funniest thing. But for people living with the effect of trauma, you might just be living as a totally different person from who you really are at your core i listen to stefan speaks and stefan says oftentimes when women say well i'm not emotional i'm not this is like but you are you just need to heal and that when he says that it it, it it recites so deeply and resounds so deeply within me because it's like a lot of us are very emotional i am a very emotional person especially when i let my guard down <laughs> but at the, on the surface and if if I don't allow myself to be vulnerable, I'm caught from my emotions. Like I'm not that emotional, right? And for a lot of women saying that as well, for a lot of women who have said, I don't want to get married. I don't want kids. I don't want a man. I don't want this. Some of it is just, is you're living in survival mode. You know that these things have the tendency to hurt you and they have maybe hurt you in the past. And you're like, I don't want none of that hurt, right? I don't want none of that trauma anymore. And so you adapt to this individual for the sake of survival and protection and it works because you're you're surviving right you're protecting yourself you're not living you're not living as your true self you're not blooming you're not expressing you're not like i don't have the words i think you understand what i'm trying to say so reason number one trauma takes you so far away from your true self and if you really want to find that true self and live in that beautiful self that you are or you could be or you should be or you were once upon a time 
you need to heal. You need to begin your healing journey, right? And for some of us like me, there might be that constant battle within you. It's like you're dragging yourself to different ways. There's confusion, there's battle, there's unrest because you're living as who you are not for the sake of survival. So heal today to get back to self and find peace. Reason number two. Well, I mean, that was reason number two. I didn't even know. You live a peaceful, fulfilled life. You find peace. You live more peacefully, more fulfilled, more happily, more purposefully. Because everyone on this earth, I believe, regardless of whether you're Christian, I'm Christian, but regardless of whether you're Christian or Muslim or atheist, I believe everyone on this earth has a part to play, has a purpose. And there are people who are not necessarily re- religious who have found purpose. So this is not even a religious thing. But how do you find your purpose? How do you know your purpose when you're not even living as your true self? When for some of us, we don't even know our true self. That's one thing I'm grateful for. At my core, I have known my true self. I've just, run, I've just been running away from it. Some people don't. So if you've been asking yourself, what's my purpose? Do I have a purpose? How do I find my purpose? How do I live purposefully? Maybe look deeper than you. Maybe you're living with trauma. Maybe you're running away from self. Maybe you haven't even found, discovered, understood, or known your true self. Maybe you have, but you're running away. Whatever the situation is, if you actually begin to get into healing, you just might find self and find purpose. And the most beautiful thing is, for the past six years or thereabouts, I have known my purpose. And I have been trying to get to it. And I'm still on that journey, hence all of this. However, I've come to realize another sight to my purpose. I've always been in the pursuit of, you know, being like established, successful academically, work, money, like be that, you know, empowered woman and all of that stuff. I want to work, I want to make my money, I want to, in my career, I want to this and that. And it's so funny now. Now on my healing journey, I realize that that's not where I'm meant to be. Don't get me wrong. I am going to build my empire by the grace of God. I am going to help people. I am going to maybe still act. I am going to maybe still be in TV, radio. But primarily my purpose lies in helping people in this way, right? Through my books, through my media, through this. Giving a part of me to help people find peace, happiness, and live better. And the second part of that is crazy. I can't believe I'm going to say it. But I realized the second part of that was to actually just love someone, someone closer to me, my person. Be a partner to someone and pour all of the love that I have within me in that person and nurture, grow that person. I'm going to talk about that in another video because I, I, I still feel a little bit reluctant. And, and you know, <laughs> is that really me? Cringy to say. So we're going to talk about that in another video. But the point I'm trying to make here is The more you heal, the more you come back to self, the more you understand, feel, and discover the deeper sides to you. The closer you get to purpose, the closer you get to fulfilled, meaningful living, the closer you get to peace, contentment. So it's like, it's like a domino effect, right? You begin the process of healing And it just keeps pulling down stumbling blocks to self, to hope, to life, to healing. Uh, Rather, well, healing leads to, no, to more healing anyways, to purpose, to everything. And you begin to live this life that you actually love with a self that you actually know and love. Reason number three, three, good physical health. This one is very personal for me. I'm going to say very personal for me because (laughs) sometimes I get tired. I get stressed. I get fatigued. I get, you know, pains. When I talk to my mom or my sister, because they're both health practitioners or doctors, like nothing's wrong with you. Why are you having these headaches? Why are you, why are you so stressed out and fatigued? And sometimes I think it's like, I'm just like mentally, I'm like, I'm running a windmill, if that's how you say it. I'm I'm in a roller coaster. I'm running like, there's a lot, right, going on here, just inside of me, mentally, or mental health-wise, or 
spiritually psychologically right not not necessarily something physically that's wrong with me and and, and if you do your research you'll hear that mental mental psychological spiritual um uh state of being reflect on your physical right on the physical plane and in a nutshell that's what i'm trying to say the more you heal the happier you are the more peaceful you are the more purposeful you live the healthier you become the you have even more strength and motivation to even get healthier and even if you even if you're not necessarily like actively getting healthier you just realize that your body get into a, a more relaxed state of being i'm now working on intentionally living slowly when i find myself in that hustle mode walk walk walk, get out of, of, of the cold get to work hurry come back i like calm down breathe in breathe out take your steps one after the other and it just calms me down right so physically it has a good effect on your health i'm not a doctor i'm not a mental health professional yet but if you doubt me, don't take my word for it. Do your research. That's reason number three, I think. Yeah, reason number four. Now I feel like I'm saying the same thing all over again. Reason number four is to find and fulfill your purpose, which you talked about already. The moment you come back to self and you start to live peaceful and you find and know self, you begin to follow purpose. You begin to understand your purpose and you begin to follow your purpose, which brings much more um, blessings, impact to people, happiness, much more healing. Because it's like a, it's like it's like a cycle, right? Healing brings much more healing, right? Healing, happiness, and all of that good stuff. And the fifth and final reason: better relationships, and you show up in life better. I have always been like bothered about how I showed up in life. What do I mean by show up in life? How I was to my friends, how I was to my sister, how I showed up at work, how I showed up outside, how I showed up socially, how I showed up wherever I was, and this. This is important because at the end of the day, this is how you build relationships, how you make friendships, how you create long lasting um, partnerships. You know, it it factors in business, it factors in work, it factors in love, it factors, factors in everything. How you show up in life is important. And I feel like I could have done better. I constantly feel like I could do better and I'm constantly trying to do better. But the thing is, when you don't understand yourself, when you're running away from self, when you're not happy, when you're not satisfied, when there's trauma, when there's stress, when there's all of these things with the new around you, it's harder to show up in the best way that you can. Now, I am on a journey where I'm trying to learn more patience. I'm trying to learn more self-love. I'm trying to learn more love towards people. I'm trying to learn more kindness. I'm not, I'm not a witch. <laughs> I'm not a witch. I'm not a horrible person. But I just think I could be better. I could be much more loving, kinder. I'm trying to learn how to let go of things more easily. I'm trying to learn how to be more sociable. I'm trying to learn how to start my own business and get over the fear. I'm just, You know, it's just getting over fear. My video of overcoming the fear of death, a lot of people are hindered by doing so or hindered from doing so many things in life because they are scared of dying. So this is what I'm saying. So when you come to a place of peace and let go of fears, let go of worries, learn to go with the flow, learn to pace, learn to self-regulate, learn to navigate life in from a healed, healthy place, you show up in life better, beautifully, happier. You are able to navigate situations better. For example, this conversation or talk of attachment styles in your relationships. And when I say relationships, it's not just love, man, woman relationship or romantic relationships, whatever kind. Because whatever you do in your romantic relationship shows up in your business relationship at work. When you are confronted by a situation you don't like that tests you or that questions you. Or that makes you feel less of yourself. Or that brings a fear in you. If you're avoidant, you run. If you're attached, if you have the attachment, um, and if you're anxious attachment, if you have the anxious attachment style, you fret, you worry, you ask too many questions. You try, and I have an anxious attachment style. And for instance, I lost a job because they offered me they offered me the job, 
I had so many shifts in my current job and I was like, I don't want to be a mean person. I don't want to be bad. I don't want to seem like, oh my God, they just gave me all these shifts and then I just threw it in the wind and I'm like, bam, I'm out. And so I'm like trying to get more time here so that I can do some of these shifts. And I'm like, can you give me some more time? And they're like, how much time do you need? And I'm like, okay, give me one extra day. And then like, okay, we're going to get back to the team before we get back to you. And I lost the job because I'm guessing they hired. So in the time I took to ask those questions and to wait for feedback, they probably moved along, moved ahead with one other person. So indecisiveness right worry and the indecisiveness was caused by worrying what my current employers will think because i don't want to ruin my reference you should when you have that kind of anxious attachment you mess up like that sometimes and i forgive myself for it don't worry <laughs> but that happens someone who has a, an avoidant um attachment might literally just avoid my current job and just ghost them and that will affect your reference in the future so having a healthy attachment style will help you be able to navigate the whole situation by sending a message to your current job and saying, unfortunately, I have to do this, but I'm going to work to so, so, so date and then sending a message to your current job, to the new one, potential one and say, yes, I'm going to start on time. So the point is, it's not just about romantic relationships, but learning to heal my anxious attachment, learning to heal all these things will have a ripple effect on all areas of life. And this is why I say you show up better in life, in all areas of life. And then in your relationships, you have better relationships. Now I'm learning to be calmer. I'm learning that it's not my duty to make my friends infinitely happy. It's my duty to be a healthy friend and, you know, contribute to your happiness. But I'm not going to beat myself and kill myself if I'm trying to do that and it's not working. I can let go. I can move on. Healthy attachment. I'm learning that if someone doesn't call me or pick my call or respond to my mail or respond to my message, I shouldn't worry and go crazy and maybe text them 500 extra times to maybe did I do something wrong or did I... Let it go. Even if I did something wrong, it's okay. If they get to the point where they tell me, I'll apologize. And if I don't think I did anything wrong, I can tell them I can, we can agree to disagree and we can move on. But the point is, there's no need to excessively worry. Things will work out fine. Somehow. And there's the God factor as well. I'm a Christian. So with God, things will always work out fine. So healing is having this ripple effect on all areas of my life. Don't get me wrong. I'm nowhere near there. Like... I am still on this journey. It is so freaking hard. And sometimes I cry and cry and cry. And sometimes I have to tell myself like, you don't want to do that thing. Your pride is your ego, but you finna do it, girl, because that is how you grow. That's how you learn to be more patient, to be more loving, to be more, to be kinder, to take failure, to stop worrying, to do it. And so this is all a part of healing. And when you do all of these things, you evolve, you grow. These things are hard, but they are beneficial. The results are gold. And this is why I think everybody should start their healing journey today. How you're going to do that is a whole different video. Therapy, listening to, well, I haven't been able to go for therapy yet because I can't afford it. And so what I do is I listen, I listen to certain um, content creators. I'm talking of people who are certified, people who give good, healthy, valid, you know, advice, tips, and, you know, counseling on the internet. The internet is gold. And that have done that books, healing, God, prayer, meditation, etc. It's not going to happen in one night. It's not going to be easy, but you can start the journey. And when you start the journey, mind blown and you begin to see all these things i have said obviously if you start the journey and you're committed to it and you're trying to do it in the best ways you can or do it in the best way that works for you you'll i promise you, you'll definitely see all these things so these are all the reasons why every and anyone should start the healing journey everybody needs to heal from trauma to live a better life and almost everyone if not everyone has had some trauma Fortunately, some people have some traumatic experience and they have trauma in that moment or in that period of time, but they get over it, right? For some people, they have these huge experiences or these traumatic experiences that leave trauma 
with them for the rest of their life or let me not say for the rest of their life for years and they adapt to survival and protection self-protection and then they start living like that and it just changes the game for them right so if you begin your healing journey today you will see the benefits all these benefits i am talking about and i wish everybody love and light and healing and i hope that everybody starts their healing journey and experiences all these things i'm saying thank you for watching this video stay tuned for the next video if you're listening on podcast thank you you can watch the video form the visual form of this um podcast on youtube my name is fawn peter if you want to listen to the audio maybe while you're driving or whatever you can go to on the fix podcast and listen to this anyways thank you so much for listening thank you for watching stay tuned and i love you guys bye